One word? Outstanding. It was a good year, actually. Considering the environment, this was a challenging environment, political year, and not just any political year, but uh, two election, presidential elections back to back. Very unusual year. This was a year where drought had impacted the economy. We were coming in with a new law on interest rate caps. So many things were up against the environment, but City had a very, very good year. Uh, total operating income was up very well. We ended up with 9.5 billion shillings. Net income, better than the prior year by, what, 8%? Profit before tax, very good numbers. So from a numbers perspective, we were very happy, very, very happy, given the, despite the headwinds. Uh, we were able to also grow our balance sheet in, in not just broadly, you know, total assets, but the corporate loans in our balance sheet went up by like 30 plus percent, which was very good. Um, margins were obviously, given the kind of clientele that we have, uh, we had to be very careful with margins. We don't have high margins. We're not a high margin business. Before interest rate cap, uh, our interest rate was about, was well below 12 percent. And even after interest rate cap, our interest rates remained well below 12 percent. So it was not margin growth that, that aided in our, in, our, in our good performance. It was really about volume. It was about client experience. It was about client engagement and those kind of things. FX volume. Not FX margins, FX volume. And that kind of thing that really aided our year. We had a very good year. The overall banking sector, I think 2017 was a challenging year. I mean, let's not mince those words. It was a tough year. This is a year where, you know, when Kenya goes through an economic, a, a political cycle, and not just Kenya, but most frontier markets, there's a lot of distraction. It, and Kenya being a democracy with a very free media, you know, we get quite noisy during political years um, to the extent that some of investors could make decisions to hold their investment decisions until after the political milestones have been passed. And we saw that. We saw a little bit of that, of that even in our own portfolio, where clients needed to make investment decisions, but chose to delay those decisions. And we saw the inverse of that, or the positive side of that, immediately after the elections. Around December, we started to see a lot more um, uh, loan requests, loan applications, and I think this was not just city but across the board. So that's on the political side. The environment, the, the macroeconomics was also quite challenging, not just because of what was happening internally but also the impact of the global environment, right? Yeah. So uh, if I think about environmentally, I think the biggest impact that Kenya had to face across East Africa was the drought. And what that did to the agricultural sector was quite dramatic. If you look at GDP and the growth, the, the growth of GDP in all the various sectors, I think almost throughout 2017, the, the hardest impact on GDP was on the agricultural sector. But that is significant considering that 70% of, of our economy is in the agri space. Yeah? So when that is pulled down, it has a dramatic impact on the rest of the, the GDP growth story. I actually believe that agri and the, and the drought had a bigger impact on Kenya's economy than did the politics, the politics than did the, you know, the global environment. Actually, not very much. This, the, the impact on our reporting is going to be negligible. We run uh, the new model of IFRS 9 on our loan portfolio uh, based on 2017 numbers and actually the entire impact was something like 0.2 percent which is you know each bank had to report this to, yes, yeah. to the central bank. Now considering that our capital adequacy ratios currently are, are very very uh, we have a huge buffer. 
Uh, currently, uh, capital adequacy is, for, according to Central Bank, the statutory minimum is 14.5%. Cities at 256 So if IFRS 9 impact of that is only going to impact us by 02 then we still have a buff of about 10% on our capital. Uh, it hasn't had a significant impact on us, mainly because of various things. We are largely very, very well capitalized. And then internally, we have been using the US GAAP model, which actually looks at expected losses. No, sorry, expected losses as opposed to actual losses. So internally, we have been very aligned to IFRS 9. Uh, perhaps that is why we haven't really, we don't see a major impact on us. So our net non-performing loans right now is zero, right? Net, on a net basis. So robotics, we actually have deployed robotics in the country. In fact, we were the first country for city in Europe, Middle East, and Africa to deploy robotics. We were the sample, we were the test country. And we have two robots that we work with. They're really computers, yeah? Mm -hmm. But that are doing a lot of the checks for us, things like AML checks. Because with that kind of volume of transactions, we have no room for getting it wrong. It just enables you to, to manage the size of volume and manage the risks with that and check for uh, all sorts of parameters that you want to check without without any stoppage. You know, robots don't go to the toilet, they don't have sick leave, they don't go for lunch, they, are, they work 24 seven. And therefore, that is the way of the world and that's the way the world is moving. Here, yeah, I'll quote my boss, yes. which is a global head. Mm -hmm. So he has been recently um, interviewed and quoted as saying that he doesn't, he completely believes in blockchain as a technology, but does not have the same view on cryptocurrencies and bitcoins and those kind of things. Uh, because, you know, it is, it, it, it is, it is not, it is not um, governed by the same rules, yeah. right? So city spends billions of dollars managing things like money laundry, uh, anti-money laundry checks and this and that and the other. And then you have another instrument that can flow under the radar without the same checks. It's, it's I think it's, you know, mm. fairly um, dangerous. However, you know, I'm not going to say that these are things that are not going to come. They probably will come, but I think they'll come under a certain environment that can be better managed so that you do not have to consider things like money laundry, terrorism, drug, tax evasion. Because right now, in its opaqueness, it lends itself well to all those things. Yeah, yeah it's simply that. So once you can remove those kind of opportunity opportunities opportunistic crime because of its opaqueness then i think you you may have something mm -hmm. yeah but i think that is a conversation that central banks need to start paying attention to mm -hmm. my thinking in five years time is we will be a corporate investment bank doing a lot more with the supply chains of our clients i think kenya will have grown significantly and therefore the people that we're supporting from a supply chain perspective will probably be onboarded as real significant local champions i think in five years we're going to see a lot more of the current local corporates that we deal with becoming global players uh, because that's really where we will be best fitted to serve them uh, and we are already seeing them in the region significantly, but I think a few of them will dare to go beyond East Africa and become big players in Africa. Just looking at the momentum, yeah, there'll be big players in Africa and we will continue to support them Pan-African wide. Some may even, if it's five years, some may even go beyond Africa.
A few may even go beyond Africa. And that is exactly where we play best. Mm -hmm. In my view, everything is there. Yeah. What you need is yeah. there. Now it's really about making them work better. And oh, what is there not to be bullish about?